morning, this is Jason Spangler. Today we're gonna to talk about some of the common mistakes that I still hear after 15 years of talking to people about uh, relative humidity testing. And, you know, first and foremost is when I talk to people and the questions I get regarding the hole depth. You know, the ASTM standard says that if you are going to do RH testing, you are going to drill into a slab that's drying from one side, so a slab on grade, below grade, or elevated in pan decking, you're gonna drill 40% of that overall thickness of that slab. If you have a slab that's drying from two sides, so it's an elevated slab that is, is ventilated on both sides as far as there's airflow on both sides of that concrete, you're only gonna drill 20%. Again, it's based on where that sweet spot is in that concrete for getting that information you're looking for with the relative humidity test. So there's been some misconception out there that I hear people talk about all the time that they go in and they drill at 40% of a four inch slab. They really don't take any necessary steps to be able to try to find out how thick that slab is. Again, that's kind of an issue all in of its own. But even for the people that know the thickness of the slab, I still find that there's people that maybe are not drilling appropriately or their holes aren't consistent in depth. So what I would say is this, it really is critical to get that depth specific measurement no matter what the thickness of the slab is. And one of the things that we do as a company is every time you buy sensors, we give you a ruler. And that ruler has on one side, if you're drilling 40% of the slab, It'll allow you to, to be able to verify what that hole depth is so that consistency can be your friend from hole to hole. So again, hole depth, making sure that you verify it and get it consistent. Number two is the number of tests that people are doing. Everybody has a rhyme or reason to why they do the quantity of tests that they do. But if you're really trying to have the documentation to be able to justify or to defend your installation practices, if there is a problem later, you really do need to be following the ASTM standard. And that ASTM F2170 standard will say, you need to have three tests for the first thousand square feet and one test for every thousand square feet after that. By shortchanging it, you're not seeing any variances that you may find from truckload to truckload of concrete or areas that maybe were enclosed later than others that might be wetter in respective to other areas of that building. Number three is the type of information and the quantity of information that people document. I will get questions or I'll get phone calls all the time. People will say, hey, I have an RH of 85%, such and such has happened, now it's at you know 92%, what's going on? You know, Why is it going up? It's been two extra weeks and it's actually up. And it's amazing to talk to people to help them try to understand that there's more to this equation than just the relative humidity that you're getting in the, in the concrete. There's also temperature that you need to be documenting. Because at the end of the day, with relative humidity, you're, you're testing humidity in the concrete relative to temperature. And so when people will give me information about relative humidity and they're questioning it, a lot of times I will sit there and have to ask them, what was the temperature in the concrete? What was the temperature in the ambient conditions, in the ambient air? What was the relative humidity in the ambient air? So as a company, one of the things that we do with every package of sensors is we provide you with a documentation sheet and there's boxes for different pieces of information that are required by the ASTM standard. Now again, keep in mind, that with our L6 system, you have the ability to use Bluetooth and an app to be able to do this documentation and automate that process. But if you choose to do it manually, we provide this with every box of sensors. Again, it's gonna be the fact that you need to really have the information of general idea of where those sensors were placed. Some people will do it on this piece of paper. Some people will do it on a shrunk down floor map that they use to differentiate what types of flooring materials are going to be installed. Whichever way you do it, you need to keep that information along with all of the information as far as ambient relative humidity and temperature, serial numbers of the, of the sensors that you're using, the date and time that you did the testing, the depth of the hole, so forth and so on. So you can see how the pieces that I've kind of talked about before this fit into all this so that you can document all of that information properly. The fourth thing is the length of time that the test takes to get accurate information. 
technically, based on the ASTM standard, you need to have service conditions for 48 hours prior to the test and during the 24 hours of the test. So the takeaway from that is I still get calls all the time that I've left the sensor in for 72 hours, things should be fine. Or that the test, the sensor physically has been there again for 72 hours. I have to help people understand that that hasn't been so since late 2016. Um, things have changed to, to 24 hours. So the test itself only takes 24 hours. But prior to that, you need to have service conditions to allow that concrete and those conditions to get to normal temperatures and normal relative humidity. That, again, needs to be documented. So once you have that, and you've taken a reading, if you've made a, made a decision that it's too wet, you're gonna wait, you're gonna come back and get readings. It ends up being a situation where you don't necessarily, as long as service conditions have been consistent, you don't necessarily have to wait that 48 hours now because you've had the sensor in there and you can just come back and just take a reading from that sensor at any point in time. So number five and the last and final thing is the certification of calibration. So whether you're using a reusable system or you're using a single usage product like our Rapid RHL6, no matter which one you're using, you need to make sure that you keep the certificates or the quality assurance process or documentation that you're using to validate that the sensors are working properly. With our L6 system, you're going to get a NIST traceable certificate of calibration that's going to come with every single one of the packs of sensors. I tell people, if you have a large pack, a hundred pack that you buy, great. Keep this, this original with that hundred pack, however you have it, uh, however you're actually going through and dispersing those sensors out and make sure you're taking copies of this original and putting them in the job files to go along with your documentation, whether it's manual or a physical report that's generated with say our data master l6 app the whole point of that is once you get to the end of the sensor pack then take the original put it in there and you're good to go but you want to make sure you keep this because it's going to have the date that it the sensor was put into its final assembly of the rapid rhl6 and it's going to go through and give you that verbiage that it is NIST traceable in its calibration, which is required by the ASTM standard. Again, it's not something that we're trying to overcomplicate this at all, or the ASTM standard is not trying to overcomplicate it. We just want to make sure that you have the information necessary to ensure that you have the proper documentation down the road or the proper confidence down the road if there is an issue to say, hey, I tested, I did it. Here's my documentation of exactly what I did it with and how I did it and what the process was. So those are the top five that I have for you as far as mistakes or maybe misconceptions that are out there about the rapid RH or RH testing in general. As always, if you have any questions, reach out, let me know. We'll be more than happy to help you guys get from point A to point B.